Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. My name is Josh Kirkham. I'll be your instructor today. It's feeling very autumn-y. Even here in Las Vegas, it's starting to get cold. The leaves are starting to change. So I want to come up with a painting for you guys for this sort of autumn-y October color changing season. And blah, 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 this is what we came up with, right? So we have a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Make sure yours is wet before we start. Uh, I didn't do that in the beginning of this video, so make sure it's wet and then nice and slick, and then we can just attack it with all these colors. Uh, check the description down below. Check the colors that we're going to be using today. Don't have to have the exact same colors. Whichever ones you have will work just fine. Uh, if it's green, it's green. If it's brown, it's brown. You know, It doesn't have to be the same. So check the description, get the colors, get your stuff, and get ready because we're going to do it just like this. Well, today, as we explained, we have no idea what we're going to paint today. I have uh, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, and then Van Dyke Brown, uh, Phthalo Green, Sap Green, Yellow Ochre, Cad Yellow, and Bright Red. Don't know if we're going to use them all, but they're there in case we need them, right? Welcome to a Wednesday. I hope your Wednesday is going fantastically. And sit here in time to paint with me, right? It's going to be fun. Okay, decided what we're going to do. We're going to use the Red Solo Cup technique for this one and make a nice white circle in our sky. So first, let's load our brush. Whoop, get it all over the place. Let's load our brush with a lot of that dark Prussian blue, right? That darker color blue. Get a really dark blue. You can even throw some black in there too. Get it down there, tap it in. Blue and black, real dark, right? A lot of paint on the brush. And then let's come in and decide where we're gonna put something. Let's go over here. All right, maybe this is our moon right there, right? So we're going to hold the cup tightly against the, the canvas. We're going to use our brush. Kind of wrap around, holding it tight to the cup. Do not let the cup move. Twist and rotate your brush until you can connect them again down underneath, right? And when we take it off, bam, perfect white circle. Fantastic little thing, right? Now we're going to stay away from the edges of that white circle and drag some of that color away. There we go, just make a circle like this around it and it'll kind of blend itself out. A little bit wider this time, a little bit wider, right? Actually, it looks really neat like that. It's like a little, like a black hole almost, a white hole. Rotate the brush, that actually looks really cool. I might actually leave the sky just like this. It's very possible that we leave it just like that. Let's see, I'm gonna come around again. It's the fun part about making something up, right? Right as you go along. You make something up. Not like we just go off the edge of the canvas like that in our circle. Same with this thing over here. Very cool. This is the fun part about playing sometimes. You can create all these cool things just from playing around. Having a little mess, a little play about. Man, I really like that. It really looks cool. I wonder, should we finish the edge and keep going? Or leave the edge in white? That would look neat too. Right, just making the same shape until we get out to the corner. Just bring it down, just like that. We're gonna rock with this sky this time. I had an idea, now it's totally different than what I had thought initially, right? Didn't think it was gonna look anything like this. Can even throw a bit more darker blue. Just make sure your circle's the same. And change it, right? Have little changes in our sky, it'll be really cool. Little changes. I like that. And yours will look totally different just based on how much you touch the canvas, you know, the angle that you're dragging in. I love that it's really dark around the moon. I'm trying not to get inside that moon, right? That's not what we want. Don't want to be inside there. There we go. Very cool little sky. Not an, even a planned thing. I don't even like that white line. It's almost too white. 
but you want to have differences, right? Very cool. Let's leave it like that. We'll rock and roll. Always fun to play about. Never seen a sky look like this before. Never made one before, that's for sure. And we're not even going to add any clouds or anything. It's going to be great. Going to be great. Let's make up some shadow color. Whether we use it for a mountain or a tree, I'm still deciding right now. We could almost make it this, this crazy thing. Let's take our two inch brush though and get rid of some of these harder lines by rotating it around, right? Rotate, I don't wanna see any of the brush strokes, I just wanna have the color there. So you have those little differences in color, right? Lighter areas, darker areas, pushing harder, and softer in some areas, keeping that same, get that hair out of there, look at that. Keeping our same angles, right? Gotta have the same angles. very light over on this side so we're just going to cover up the top cover on the top over here just get that little bit of blue color on the edges of our canvas and then we'll be rocking and rolling right now if you ever wanted to lighten up an area you can grab some white paint from down around the bottom where we put that bob ross liquid white and bring it around and change it just try to stay out of your moon right that's the that's the hard part all these little bristles, they want to creep into our moon and change the shape of the sucker. There we go. I like it. You got to play with it until you like it, right? That's the key. Doesn't even need to be a perfect circle. It really doesn't. Or you can take it, swipe it across like that. You still get that circle shape, and now it's just got a little bit of color across it. Know what I mean, jelly beans? Know what I mean, jelly bean. And take it like this and clear up all those straight lines like that. And now we've got our own little shadowed, highlit little moon, right? Nice little clean brush. Very, very cool. And again, it came from us just kind of playing around, just taking any sort of little color that's on the edges of the brush and dabbing it into our moon like that and we'll get these cool little shadows and shapes and all sorts of things and it's very thick around the moon so we can even blend it a little bit more just so we don't have that real dark line in there a real heavy thick paint and then come back in and rotate our brush around again you can even do it like this rotate it spin it around get that nice little circle it's really cool Really cool. I just want to make it even smaller, like it, it's fading into something. It should look just even cooler in my mind. Almost like we're fading into this white bit of something back here. Awesome. Awesome, so awesome. Right, get rid of all of our brush strokes and go back and forth across our whole sky. Very cool. Very cool. We can even put a little bit of, uh, take a little bit of white, kind of scrub it in there. Almost got a little bit of a moon back in there. You know what I mean? All sorts of little things that you can do. You can blend it to make your, the inner side of your circle much wider. Whiter, not wider, right? Just adds a little bit of extra something in there. All right, enough of that. Very, very neat. Let's get a little bit more dark in this side though. So we have that little bit of white line, the dark line, the white line. Just like that. Could everyone see in class? Did you bring enough for the rest of the class with your snacks? Right? All right, let's see, Josh. Come up with something, what are we gonna do? What are we going to do? Trying to lay it out in my mind. What's going on in this one, Josh? What is going on? I know a lot of people have been uh, been having trouble with their mountains and stuff, so why don't we paint like a whole giant bit of forest and trees? Let's do that. It's Halloween, right? Let's sort of make it kind of spooky. We're not on a black canvas, which makes it difficult to be non 
you know, to be spooky, if you're on a white canvas, you gotta use a lot of dark paint. I don't really wanna get the liquid black out. You could black gesso like half of your canvas. It's a real good way of doing kind of a spooky scene down around the bottom. But well, we're gonna rock and roll with this. Got our three favorite colors, blue, black, and crimson, in one big pile, mixed them up real good. And then we're just gonna load our brush full, just like this. Wiggle it down, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right, get it all nice and thick and full. Now let's come in and we can decide, maybe there's a big giant tree right here, off in our forest somewhere, right? Using the corner of the brush, pushing upwards, and then the further we get down, the more bristles we have, right? And it grows to the side. You don't wanna have this just crazy thick bit of tree up here if you're using your whole brush, right? That's why we turn it to the side so we're just using the corner. Can you guys see that? And then you're pushing upwards. Someone asked me why my canvas is so high. This is why, so you can see the bottom of the brush, right? Shoot, maybe there's another guy over here. I like making little straight lines as we go down and it kind of gives you an idea. It gives you a guide so your tree is straight. You don't have to make straight trees. With this trippy sky, we really don't have to do anything that, that is real. Right, coming again, pushing up with the brush, very corner, that way you make it nice and small. You don't wanna have it real long at the top of your, your tree, right? Then it gradually, you can even flip it over for a nice crisp corner. And the more we come down and push up and spread our bristles and our branches out, the more we start to see this tree shape, right? Now let's see, let's, we could put one over there, but let's start with our forest over here. First, we're gonna do it on the sides. Kind of gives, fill us, fill us in here. Right, that's one big pop of tree up living out out of the top of all these little trees. Just like that, nice and pointy on the top. Maybe our forest comes down, maybe it starts going up again. We'll have another big tree over there. Just gonna fill in all this stuff down here. Just letting the color come off of the brush as much as you can get off of it, right? We're just kind of blending all this bit of forest in. Just blending it in. Maybe it comes over here too. We got another one. Let's leave a space for one more big tree. And then maybe we got some that come off the side over here. Don't always have to go off the edges of your canvas. Really don't. Let's make another tree back here now. See what we can come up with for this sort of scene and sky for our kind of spooky deal. Maybe this guy is a little bit taller, covers over some of our moon, right? Because you have to cover over some part of your favorite bit. So if your moon is your favorite bit, you've got to cover over some of it. Again, pushing upwards with our brush and moving side to side, kind of like a metronome. Bring him down into your bit of forest, right? Then come back in, vertical now to kind of blend him in with all the rest of those trees. Now, as we get down here, there's less and less and less and less paint on the brush, so it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter in color, right? Which is what we want. We don't want to have a whole big thick bit. You can see this angle that I'm going on back here. You don't want to have a whole big thick bit of paint when you start to make your your bit of fog and mist and all that stuff. You guys can see what we're doing here. Now we're gonna come back in with a clean dry brush and tap this. And all these little bristles are going to blend that paint into even, even softer, right? And I wanna go almost all the way to the tip tops of the trees, because you never know what's gonna be in front. If you leave it too low, you know, if you're down here and your, your mist is down here beneath all of this stuff, you're missing out on a lot that you can add and then add depth as well. Right, y'all, like I said with your moon, you have to cover over something. You gotta have some mystery back in there, right? So we fill this, all this fog, in different bits, just tapping it nice and rough, right? We have all these different, even these little areas right here that you can see, but I can't because I'm at a different angle. I can look back in the camera and see right here. But even that looks like a little bit of extra forest or some kind of extra trees, which gives me an idea on what else we can do, right? So now come in, again, almost all the way to the top and in different size circles, some small circles, some big circles. And then come down and then back around and all it is is just kind of mixing up all this fog 
in a random sort of pattern. Right? You can bring it down as far as you wanted to, because we don't know where the bottom of these trees are, right? Maybe they start there, where we can start to see little differences just from how we mixed it. All right, nice and flat, nice and soft. Now this is just about as soft as the, the part of the paint that we haven't even touched yet because we blended it a thousand times, right? All these little bristles like to do the work for us. We don't even really have to do anything. I love that sky though. Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic. I really hope you try this one. I really hope you, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel. The more, the more times you guys hit the like button, the more people it sends it out to, so more people can see, right? And you got to help me grow the channel. So, hit that share button, copy the link, paste it when you do yours, and at least hit the like, the little thumbs up, and subscribe. At least give me that, right? There we go. Nice, thick. I love big, thick trees like that. And when we're painting a cold scene like this, you don't really have to put a whole lot of, of uh, highlight on there. We will, just to show you. Okay, I like getting a little bit of liquid white on the brush first. And let's run it down through the blue. Don't need a whole lot of blue. It will literally take over, right? Now we have this nice, soft, kind of sky-colored blue that we can come back in here with. And even softer than we touched it initially. Look at that, it's fantastic. But you gotta be so soft. You don't wanna, you don't wanna kinda mush the details that we've already made. We're just barely touching them. Whatever comes off your brush comes off. You can always go back and get more paint, right? Very corner of the brush, same thing. I'll show you that up like a downward angle, right? Just touch very lightly. It's so light. Oh my God, it's so light, guys. That's it. You don't have to do it all. You don't have to cover all that shadow. It's so light. Again, we're gonna come in with the liquid white, right? Don't wanna have a whole lot on your brush, so sometimes you have to drag it out so you don't have too much. And then you can go back and clear up that area. A little bit, this one's gonna be a little bit darker blue just from how it's mixing right here in front. I can see. Okay, it'll come up again, just touching. This is where you kind of give your tree its life. Just very lightly touching as we go down. And then the further you get down, the less, you know, little bits are gonna be lit up, right? Especially by that moon back there, if that is a moon, they're not gonna be lit up very bright, so you don't have to make them white, right? Not all of your snow has to be white. It's multiple colors. You can have purple snow, you can have blue snow, you can have all these sorts of colors, and it never all has to be white. I like having it white when we're down here in the front, right? The very closest things to us are gonna be white. It's gonna be harder to see further away. Now, why don't we come in, we'll do a different set of trees with the same color that we just did those ones with. Because we blended it out and it became much lighter, almost white down here at the bottom, we can come back in with that same dark color on a different brush, right? The half round brush. Let's kind of make these circular trees. So maybe these guys live over here. Right? You don't even have to create the whole thing. Let's say that, let's imagine our horizons down here. You don't even have to create the whole tree, right? Because it's going to come down and it's going to turn into all this fog. And it'll put, just because we almost went all the way to the top, it makes this little tree in front, those bigger trees behind, right? When I was first starting, I always thought that in order for something to look closer, it had to be taller than what was behind it. But that's not always true. Not always. Watch this. We'll come up here with this guy nice and thick. Kind of grow down. And we got this whole little bit because we saved that little extra bit of fog. And this tree can grow down here. And it doesn't even have to go all the way. It really doesn't. We'll show you that it really doesn't. Okay, take that same brush that we made all that fog with. And just kind of grab the tips. You know, you can go up, up as high as you want. I like going almost all the way to the top. And drag all that stuff down see all that dark color now is becoming more fog underneath right it's really great and it helps you add depth to your painting gotta have depth which means you have to cover stuff you have to put stuff maybe a little bit higher than some of the other trees so it pushes them back have some some fog in between to help things you know kind of stay apart now it looks like these bits of forest back here are not connected to this one tree. This one tree is now connected to these bits of forest in the front. That's how it looks to me anyway. And if you wanted to change it, 
just bring your big tree down a little bit further and now he's part of this forest down here. So many things you can do just with the slightest little thing, right? The slightest little change can change the look of your painting. Now, this guy being almost as tall, if not taller than that one, definitely connected down here makes him seem like he's in the front. So all sorts of stuff you can do, right? Always make sure you mix it up in those different size circles. And that way you get this kind of random bit, right? And take it down here every so often, just swipe it down around the bottom. That'll be our snow down in the bottom. Maybe we're in the bottom of this valley. If we can kind of create a look back here, maybe we'll have something come over there. Maybe there'll be a cabin over here, who knows? Speaking of which, I think that's a good idea. Who had that idea? Whose idea was that to put a cabin in there? Oh, that was Josh's idea. That was Josh's idea. Let's add a little bit of color though. I don't want to do just, I had, you know, last week, last Wednesday, I had a blue, black, and white painting. And this one's got crimson in it already, so it's already slightly different, but it looks very similar. So let's add some color to it, right? Get all of our beautiful colors out. Maybe we'll throw some greens on these trees in the front that we can see. Now that they're a little bit closer, we can see them, right? You can see that they have a little bit of detail. Even if it's just a slight change in color and it's not this misty area back here. All right, so we'll tap them in. Just need the littlest bit because the paint's not very thick back here. All right, and again, we're not trying to tap and cover all of the shadows. You don't want to cover them. You want to leave some areas that are dark. You can't cover everything. If you cover everything, then you have no depth. And I'm mixing it with the phthalo green, and that way this green stays dark for back here. You don't want these super bright bits. Right? And again, just not covering everything. You don't have to cover all of the dark. You have to have some sort of shadow. And I love how these are two different green colors right here. Two different greens. Let's wash all the green out of this brush. Very cool. Now, just to follow suit with that, we can come back in and grab some of that green on our brush that we did the highlights with and change the color of this guy just by adding little bits of green, not covering even all those blues because those blues will be different shadows, right? But now he's a little bit closer. We can see him a little bit better. It's not all blue and shadowy like back here. Maybe this one will end up being like a winter to a, to a, to a fall, to a summer, to some kind of something. Right? We can do that very easily. I'm gonna grab up some of that purpley color and some of this uh, yellow ochre. Not a whole lot of liquid white though. And again, that purpley color is gonna kind of dull it down a little bit. Same thing with red. If you add red to your your greens and your yellows and stuff, it'll kind of dull it down. Then we'll come back in and make a little bit of uh, I don't know, a little bit of an orange tree in here. Maybe some of this guy's got a little orange on him. And just change up those colors. Right? They're not even all the same orange because right? we mixed it with the red. So we have all these different colors to mess with. Right? A little bit of red, a little bit of this cad yellow. And we'll get this different color that we can come back in. Maybe there's a little brighter bit of a, a tree over on this side. Or we can come down even further into our mist and create little things out of nothing that aren't even there yet. Right? All sorts of stuff. I don't want to have it too colorful though. Don't want to get too crazy, right? Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab some of this color. I'm just going to blend it down into that fog. So now our fog will change into this like yellowy color. Even up here, it's a little too bright. Bring it down, bring it down. Bring it down. And you can get all this fog and mist even in between all of our little trees and bushes and stuff, right? Looking really cool. We don't even know where the bottom is yet. Like this still may be the top of the trees and you can do all sorts of things. All sorts of crazy things we can do. We'll just bring down a whole nother set of trees and bushes in here, right? Again, covering over some of that bit of color, some of that bit of fog, you have to really kind of cover areas, make it look like there's, you know, even down in there. Oh, it's fantastic. Right? Let's not do the whole thing though. Maybe we'll come 
over here. And we don't even know what's happening down in here. It could be a whole bit of bush. It could be anything else. All sorts of things. We don't even know. Again, I'm gonna come up, grab some of that, and just drag it down. Am I changing the color from very dark, and then the further we go down, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Same thing down here. All right, come in with our little circles. All sorts of stuff, every which way. Right, now we have this bit, this forest just kind of growing at us and kind of growing in color. It's really cool. Now let's come in just because I don't want to change brushes. Put a little bit more of that yellow on this guy over here. There we go. Oh, why not, Josh? And we'll change it up with the green on this guy. Just kind of dabbing it in, because again, a lot of it's going to get lost into the fog. You don't really have to worry a lot about it. All right, what if this guy's got a little bit of green mixed in with his yellow? The more and more you play with this stuff, the more little colors you're going to end up finding as they mix together, right? Let's come up here with that. A little bit of indecipherable fog. That's what I love about fog. Can't really tell where something is, where the bottom is, where the top is. Who knows? But it's in there. Who does know? There we go. All sorts of stuff. We can even take, you know, you can throw in little sticks and twigs inside some of your, your taller branches, stuff down around the bottom. Any which way you want. Grab a little bit of our dark color again. Or a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue, a little bit of dark, a little bit of pink thinner, right? Bam, 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 bam. Come back in here, add all sorts of little tree trunks and sticks and twigs and all sorts of things that are growing up out of our forest, right? That's why we leave some of these foggy areas. It makes it easier to make these little sticks and stuff like that. Just different things, just quick. Be quick about it. You don't want to take too much time making a shape because then you're gonna to start to focus really on that shape a lot too much. And then it'll end up making you mad or getting, you know, getting under your nerves anyway. Let's see, maybe there's something over here coming out of this guy. All sorts of stuff in our little fall, autumn sort of painting, right? And again, these things down around the bottom, we can blend the bottom away into a little bit of fog. So don't worry about it if you don't like it. Right, all sorts of bits going every which way. You can have all sorts of fun, kind of try new things. I love when ones come up out of the, the thing, like it just it overgrew and it came up out of there, right? You have all sorts of little bits, even little messy things down in here. Go back in, get a little paint there, bing, bang, boom, put them back in there like that. And that guy's got a little bit of a branch going back out of him. You never know. Looks really spooky back there, like something's going to come out. Again, anything you don't like, even these ones that we scraped in with the knife, you can literally tap back over them and it will blend them away. All right, tap along the bottom of our branches. And bam, bam. Creating more and more and more and more and more depth with these different colors and our little bits of fog, right? Gotta have our little bits of fog. Try to make that one a little bit more, uh, less noticeable. Okay, what are we gonna do here now? As we're getting closer, we're coming down to the ground. I still like our idea of having like a little bit of a thing. Almost wanna put a cabin back there, just the way that it is now. So, let's do that. Now, I'm gonna mix up those same three colors. This is my favorite shadow colors. We keep them separate over here, right? Didn't even really use the light today. We'll have to use it for something. We do have that brown. We can make a nice bit of cabin wood, all sorts of stuff, right? Now let's come in and let's decide our cabin. Let's do like a, a little mini one on top too. So let's see, let's go like this. I want to make it like a weird shape though. So we're going to pull it in, like round it. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's this weird saggy little thing. Maybe this side goes in like that. It's got this weird top to it. 
And yours can look totally different, of course. All right, there's a little bit of Eve hanging off the top. Let's go back a little, come down, got our roof. Now let's come in and we're gonna round this sucker again like this. So we got this weird rounded looking cabin. And it'll be it'll look better when we put the, the white on it. Don't worry about that. Okay, now I want to come up. This is only gonna be the the top of our little bit of cabin, so there we go. Let's line that out. Line our roof out that way, and then we can go and highlight it. But this is only gonna be one little bit, so don't worry, it's gonna grow a lot more. Now we're gonna grab a bit of white, a little bit of brown, mix them up. We have this spooky looking, creepy little cabin. Remember, more brown than white. You don't need a whole lot of white. It's really powerful with that brown. We're not gonna over mix it. And now, we're gonna, yep, come in. Posting this video. Uh, it's gonna be on my Wednesday videos. Oh. Hello. I don't know if you can even Hi. see you, but London's here, everyone. Hi. Here, you take and paint. Me take and paint. Yeah, just fill in this little cabin with that brown. Yeah, you mean it's on, fill in the cabin? So like this, right here. Well, no, just tell me. No, I know, I'm, I'm trying to. But, so all the paint's on this side right. of the knife. So just kind of fill it in, make like a little swipe. Almost like flat though. Yeah. That's not bad. I'll watch it like this. So now we have black on the paper. Right, but that's fine, like that. Okay. Now, now you're much closer and keep it really flat and just pull it down and let it drag off. Don't push too hard though. You wanna just like very lightly pull it down. See, and you get this wood grain. Huh. It's really cool. Check that out. Anyone can do it. Except me. No, London's really good at it. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I love gonna, you, but. I love you too. So we're gonna come up here. Hey, I'm gonna get in like uh, 10, 15 minutes. Where are you going now? For my three o'clock meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. I love it. Love you too. The kids are just gonna stay till tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna pull our knife down in this weird little angle. Right, so we have this kind of odd shaped rounded bit of our cabin. Now I'm gonna come back in with the, the darker brown and kind of match that as the front of our cabin, right? Now we can take our darker brown and just very lightly pull it down very close to, you know, the canvas. We got this cool looking little thing right here. Let's add our little bit more of our highlight paint because we're gonna have to come into it. It's what you don't get yet, guys. You don't understand yet. Okay, I'm just gonna make the bottom very soft. You can pull this guy, make him down a little bit softer. And you'll see why. Here we go. So now we're going to come up into our little bit of cabin, right? Pulling down, making a little bigger bit of a building. Like that, and it'll sit on top of it. You see that? If we can do it right, it will sit right on top of that sucker. And all I'm doing is just pushing down real hard, kind of mushing in that dark color so it stays on the canvas, right? Now, how to make it look correct, Josh? How is it gonna look correct? There we go, I'm just kind of lining those up with my eyeballs. Get a little bit of that dark and come down like so. Bam, there's our roof, a little pitch, right? That look right to you guys? It looks right to me. Now we're gonna come back in with that brown and flush it down. Okay, same, same width as the knife, just very lightly pulling it straight down. And you get these very cool random bits. That's why we don't over mix the paint, right? Straight down, now you got this cool little bit of wood green to your cabin, looks very neat. Very neat, but we have to mix it with darker brown, right? In order to do the sides. 
And that way the sides will look like they're in a different light if they're a little darker colored brown, right? So let's get up underneath the pitch. I like leaving this little dark line right on the corner of the building right here. And that kind of signifies the way that it's going to turn to me. Okay, a little bit darker down here. Always go down further than you think you need, okay? I'm gonna show you why. Looks really neat, actually. If we can just figure out, gonna come up high enough here. Our little dark side of our cabin, just like that. Grabbing in a little bit of our dark just so we can come over the edge and make that little front of our cabin look like that. Looks fantastic. I like it, it almost looks like a little schoolhouse or something. Little, little schoolhouse. We're gonna come in with our window, bam. We can even take a little bit of white and make little shutters or blinds, just like that. Very, very neat, guys. A little bit more of that dark color. Same dark color that we always use. And let's go off center, just like so. Bingo. Make our door a little bit longer down around the bottom. You guys are like, Josh, this looks whack. Trust me. I right, grab at the top corner first, pull it out, and then shape. All right. Bam. What do you think about it now? What you think about it now, right? <laughs> it's very cool looking. I like that. Very neat. Never painted a building like that before. I was at work the other day and I was kind of drawing one out to see what it would look like. And uh, don't mind it, I guess. Okay, let's take our knife. We're going to come and just scrape in little sticks straight down. All right, over here. And that way you've got boards in your building. And come on this side and put in another little window. Just by filling it in with that dark color, right over the top of that brown, right? Now you got a cool little window on the side. It's like a little drive-through. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do here. Why don't we take our bit of just sap green here on the brush, kind of dabbing it in, same thing, so you get that even distribution of green on your brush. And then why don't we come in, sneak in front of you guys, and just start filling in our bit of grass, right? Get this grass hill that lives up this way. All depends on how you angle your brush, right? Going down, turning to the side. Down, turning flat, right? Down, turning flat. You can put a little bit of grass out in front of this guy. All right, maybe he's not mowed as long for a while. It's getting too tall. All these cool little things, just based on the angle of your brush and a little bit of difference in color, right? Like I always say, maybe there's a little bit darker back here. And just from doing that, you add another little bit of depth. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, phthalo green inside this bit of grass, right? Making it a little darker, changing it a little bit. Just changing it. And then based on our angles of our brush, you can make your grass look all sorts of certain ways. And down here, we're just going to kind of brush over this, spread it out a little. Maybe we got a little path that grows, goes back behind our thing. That's what it looks like to me anyway. I don't know what it looks like to you guys, but that's what it looks like to me. So again, based off of the angle of your brush, so constantly turning it, you know what I mean? Now, I can take over these, same thing, pulling in the same direction that we laid them down in. And then down here around the bottom, I'm gonna pull it out a little bit more rough, you can hear it. I don't want to cover over all that beautiful little bit of pathway that we created. It's really neat. Really neat. Nice, cute little autumn painting that anybody can do, right? Again, these are on here so lightly that you can swipe over them and not 
ruin it because we're not using whole, you know, up here it's very thick, big trees, very wet back here. Down here, it's just like they're, you know, liquid white down on the bottom. You can be rough with it, you can fill it in, you can change it, you can do all sorts of things. We can even just like that, where it doesn't even go down to the bottom, but you can see the color kind of fades. Looks fantastic, right? I sure like it. Okay, I grabbed up a little bit of the same dark sienna, the brown. Mix it in with this bit of dark over here. Not too much though. And then maybe from behind the cabin, which we can't really see way back there, so it's very flat, right? You're not gonna see the whole lot of the trail, you know, as much as you would down here, okay? And we're gonna start to cut it in and letting it, letting it grow, kind of filling in that area of white that the, the canvas did for us. Just, you know, it was so nice. It was like, here you go, guys. Take it and run this way. Right? Fill it in however your kind of wider area looked. And now I can even take it and wrap it back around this way if I really wanted to. That's the question. Do you really want to or not? See what back here? Very small, very thin compared to even here or here. Much wider strokes as we come towards us, right? Much wider. And the best part about the knife is it's randomly dropping thick areas, thin areas, all on its own, kind of randomly doing it for us. That's why you want to go sideways back and forth and then slightly go down. You don't want to go too far down. You don't want to have a big jump down, you know what I mean? You don't want to jump down. Swipe over that sucker just up to my cabin. Bam. Now we have this light little bit of shadow. Again, everything on here is super light, right? It's not very thick. It doesn't really have to be super thick. It does not have to be it. Let's take all this. Wipe it away, right? It's a little bit too thick. A little bit too thick back there, which is the danger you can get from using the palette knife and it'll drop it on in different places. Now it looks a little bit better back there. A little bit easier. Okay, we need to come back in. A little bit of that sap green and phthalo green on the brush. Just come in, go slightly over our little path, just a little. Right? It just gives it more depth and if we get closer push a little harder deposit a little bit more paint and then our grass gets much more thick see what I mean all depends on your brush or how you like to kind of blend it out I right, can bring it all the way down here even with the one inch brush you can bring it over you can kind of change the shape of your lamb right we didn't know what we were gonna do over here but now we do looks just like that Okay, again, very softly, like a cloud, swiping over that so we don't lose all the cool little bits and different things, right? That's the cool part, is the differences. You can take a little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre looks fantastic in grass, but you don't want to put too much of it in. Don't want to have too much. Trust me on that one. Kind of softening it with these. And then bam. Swipe, swipe. Not really hard swipes though, right? You don't want to kill it. And sometimes you just look back and it looks awkward. So you gotta hit it a little bit harder and then swipe it. Work at it until you like the way it looks. Now we just have these little differences in color, right? You can even come in with little bits of darker color every every so often, just from our our fan brush. And again, you get these cool little bits, little shadows, little things that you can work at until you like the way that they look. Just little differences, right? Just adds a little bit. Adds a little some something, something. Okay, I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna grab more of that white and more of the brown. And we're gonna mix it up, just like the wood, right? Not overdoing it, but it's back there. Don't want to put too much down, and then again, going side to side, pushing hard, letting it drop off however it comes off, okay? That's the key. Doesn't all have to be the same. 
right? Bam, bam, bam. Keeping our angles good. And then we're just kind of smashing it off, just mushing it off of the knife. And you're doing it randomly, right? That's the key. And that way, as long as we can keep our, our strokes, you know, in the, going the same way, then the dirt will look really cool. And you don't want to overdo it. All right, so. Don't try to fill in this area down around the bottom of the canvas. It's always a pain in the butt for me. But don't try to overdo it. Don't try to cover everything, right? You can come back and as we get closer, we can bring in some of that dark and fill it in over here. Get all these cool little shadows and little different things and drop downs and you know, where the light really can't reach so well. And again, if you do it randomly, it makes it look really neat, like an unkempt little road back there, right? Make sure your angles are good, though. A little bit of dark back there, too. Bam, bam, bam. Looks really neat, guys. Looks really neat. And take our two-inch brush. Just so, so lightly swiping over it, and that'll give you these cool little things. Look at this down here. Ah, oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Now, why don't we take and put a little bit of fence way off back here. All right, little fence post. Little fence post way off in the back. Now, as they start coming towards us, then they're gonna get a little bit taller and a little bit closer. Just like this. Just kind of lining it in with our, I think it doesn't have to look perfectly straight, right? These ones back here, you can make them whatever height you want to make them, but don't have them be taller than your door or as tall as your door, right? That's not, you can't have a fence as high up as your door is. So before we get too far ahead, let's go back in, scrape up a little bit. Just touch in. And now this guy is going to be over there as well. So it wraps around, starts coming around towards us. And then eventually we won't be able to see part of that fence. Right? And all of our beams don't even need to touch. They really don't. They could be different levels, it'd be all sorts of stuff. That's what's really cool about this. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Yours can look however you want it to look. I'm just going to take mine down a little bit further. And bam, bam. And then we'll come back in and just swipe it very lightly across our path, just so it's only at the edge of the path, right? Very light and very straight with your swipes. Got to be straight. Get a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow ochre. Yeah. I love you, bye. Love you too, mommy, bye. A little bit of green, a little bit of yellow ochre, and just come back in, kind of hiding some of our path, right? Then we come all the way up to the edge of it. And bam, bam, just filling it in, right? Swipe it over very lightly. Just like so, looks really cool. Really cool if you ask me. Okay, now, this next one is gonna actually cover over the one in the back and have to go the slightest bit taller as well. All right, sometimes you have to cover over pieces. Now we need to go slightly taller than this guy and bring him down. So now our fence is gonna wrap around, right? So now our beams are gonna look on a different angle than this guy. And then we'll continue on. Let's see. Let me do our next guy here. All right now that they're going away from us again, to the side, they're gonna to need to start being spread out further. So maybe our next one would be over here. right down to the bottom of our little path, right? Looks really neat. 
Makes it look further away and closer up. So now these guys are going to cut across, like so, and we're going to be getting a little bit bigger, thicker as we come closer, right? And now, let's see, let's make this guy a little bit thicker. Now this guy over here is going to be much thicker because he's the closest beam, right? Again making it look like we're going back a little bit further. Same sort of angle, getting bigger, and then smaller, and then smaller, and then it wraps around and we lose it forever, right? Wrap up that same white and brown, kind of go over the edges of our little poles. Got to leave some of that darkness in there though. Gotta leave some of the dark underneath. And all of them don't have to be the same. That is the best part about nature. Nothing out there is really all the same. So yours doesn't have to be either, right? Don't want them to all be the same. They're all the same, then it's gonna either look like a cartoon or it's not gonna look real. I've seen plenty of beams and boards in my life and they are not all the same, let me tell you. Now let's go over here. Bam, just like so guys. That looks really cool. I like where this one's going. I could put like a wheel leaning up against the side of the house. Might be hard to, uh, to do though. Why can't we have a, uh, a hay bale, though? There we go underneath, and we'll get all that. Watch this. A little bit of extra shadow under that guy, right? Now, we're going to try this for the first time. I want to put a little bit of brown on it. A little bit of yellow ochre, because I would think that would be the color of some hay. Huh? Doesn't look too bad. Look like a hay bale to anybody? <laughs> Looks like one to me, I don't know. I don't know though. I like it. I like it. You know what we're going to do? We're going to move it. Scrape that sucker up. Tap in our green grass. Right now we just have a little bit more shadow to deal with. A little bit of shadow. What I want to do get a little bit of uh, our shadow color on here, and then we're going to add another little pine tree, kind of pushing our our house back, right? Our schoolhouse, whatever it is. Right? Got to be nice and thick when you go over the house, though. You want it to be thick. You got to cover over it, right? Even that. I can still see too much. So I want to come back in, very dark, very thick. Cover over some of that house. So you can't even see it back there, right? It adds another little layer of depth. Really cool. Shoot, we might as well just do a little small one over there too. And you don't always have to mix your paints, you know, before you get your brush into it. And go right on the brush, just like me. Right here, this little guy back here. Again, nice and thick, nice and dark, covering up everything behind it. You don't want to see through it at all. Right, we gotta let our guy back here. And then we could poof. And I change this whole thing into a hill just by doing different things, right? Change it in your mind. Pull that guy down adjust the angle and now all of a sudden we've got a little hill along the side of our house right here and if I do say so myself it looks fantastic I really I can't get over the sky in this one I don't know what it is hope you guys like it I hope that's why you clicked on this painting because you're like oh that sky all right and you know what let's put a bit of uh since we have it, we've got our brown out. 
put a little bit of tree trunk in our trees. Uh, you're never gonna see the whole thing, so don't worry about it. Just a little indication. Right, maybe we got a nice little green spire on the top. Bam, bam, bam. And as we come down, remember to leave dark in between your color and any other color that's you know, relatively the same. So those greens, you gotta have this dark color separating those greens, okay? Don't wanna have the green in front mix in with the green in the back. Nobody will be able to tell where it's coming from. I love these little fan brushes, these micro ones. They give you the coolest little details on your, on your trees. Okay, I'm gonna come back over here, a little bit more liquid white, just to make it nice and thin. And over on this side, just very lightly touching. The more and more we go down, the more bristles, and then we start to turn. Turn, turn, turn. Cover up some of that trunk so you can't ever see the whole trunk, right? But the more and more you work at it, the more chance it's gonna go muddy. So do it quickly, less attempts. Less attempts, the better. Because the more and more you keep going over it, the more it's gonna end up with this crazy muddy mess. All right, let's take our bottom of our uh, little fence posts out. Now we can make them, there we go, perspectively the right size that they need to be, you know, for their for what they are, where they are right there. You can take a little bit of grass, come in, just so it's not so nice right around the edge, right? Just so it's not so nice. There we go. Bam. I don't even think I came down far enough on this guy. There we go. Poof. Remember, when you're down around the bottom, pull stuff out straight. It's gotta be straight out to the side. You don't wanna have all this craziness, okay? Now, we can even take, let's switch back to our dark kind of shadowy color here. All right, get it on that half round brush. All crazily like, and let's say there's a bit of a bush that lives off the side of the fence over here. Why not, right? Why not? Again, you take that, pull it out in whichever which way you want. Just kind of match the flow of your land, right? If we're creating this hill over here, then we've got to have it be the same. Can't be all crazy. I like how that little bit of green got kind of caught up in there. Looks great. Okay, let's get rid of all this thick color on our brush. Swap back to our yellow. A bunch of yellow on this brush with our liquid white. Very bright yellow. And then we're gonna go a couple swipes into our green just to change it. And then come up here and just add little bits. We don't wanna cover the entire bush, right? Don't wanna cover it. Don't do it. If I found out you covered it, I'm coming to your house, okay? Just little differences. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, a little bit of different. People like that. They like differences. Okay, let's do one of these trees I like to paint. You guys know this crazy bit of stick that's coming in. All right, where do we put him is the question. The question. You guys expect me to put him over here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to switch it up on you. Let's just, let's put another one of these guys over here. A little bit taller, a little bit further down on our hill. Come back in, fill him in. Nice and dark. Remember, you got to have it dark. See, and just adding depth to our painting. Every time you put something down a little bit further and a little bit higher than what it was, or what the one next to it looks like, then you get depth in your painting, right? Very, very nicely done. There we go. Don't want to let it go down all the way, though. Got to stop yourself. Watch yourself. Oh. Uh. Again, leaving these little areas of differences in our grass, right? They're not necessarily shadows, just differences. Different colors, different things, different angles of our land. Maybe this guy comes across more, you know, horizontal. 
like this as we come down. Depends what yours looks like. Totally up to you, right? Now we're gonna come back in. Grab up a lot of that yellow again. Want this one to be a different color. Couple swipes through the green to change it, but it's mainly yellow. And then we'll come in and start going over that. The yellow will mix with the dark color, might mix with the blue that's in there. You get a different shade of green than you even thought. Okay, come back, get some more liquid white. Back into our yellow. Couple swipes through the green. And again, it won't even be the same when you come back to do it like that. So do not worry about it. Boom, just like that, guys. I'm gonna fix it for my buyer on the side. For whoever buys the sucker, you'll be able to see that the side is finished. And it gives you this cool little mini scene on the side. If you wrap your tree around just a little, really neat. Really cool looking. I like that. Love that. It's fantastic. What do we do over here though? We never pulled our tree out. We don't know where it was sitting. Just like that. Differences, right? So not even all the dark is like that. It's really cool the way that's sitting like that. I really like it. I like it a lot. We'll go into that green and yellow, and then we can come back in and add little bits of taller bits of grass or some kind of some kind of something, some difference, right? How many times have you heard me say that today? Some little difference in color back there. I think this painting is like screaming for another big, another big bush over here. But I think we'll do it in a minute. Okay, let's trick them up, Josh. And we'll go just like this. <laughs> Bam, didn't think I was gonna do that, did you? Did ya? No, you didn't. You did not think that I was gonna do that. Poof, okay, pushing harder as we get down closer, right? Now we gotta come in, let's highlight this guy first. Let's try that today. Let's try that old sucker today. Again, you do not have to cover all of the what? The dark, right? Okay, pull it over a little bit of a, kind of a downward angle, like whoosh, whoosh, that's what we're doing, just in, not so exaggerated, right? Just gives it a little bit of a rounded sort of a shape to it. And then we can come back in. Don't worry about what it looks like now. If you want to have your paint marbled, and that way you can play with it until you like it, right? My mom always said not to do that. Don't play with it, Josh. But now, yeah, I play with it until I like it. Was that in bad taste? Maybe, maybe slightly. <laughs> Okay, getting a little bit brighter as we get up here. Again, trying not to cover the whole thing. Don't need to cover all of it in that highlight color, right? Now, let's get a bit of that brown, mix it in with our darker color down here. And then we'll come back from the other side, upside down, right? Kind of meeting in the middle. And then the higher and higher and higher you go up, the more bright you want to see. You don't want to see all the dark down there. You want to see all the dark at the bottom, but more bright at the top. You can even tap it in like this and just give it all this cool bit of texture. Just like so. And try not to touch your uh, bit of path back here with your finger, I guess. Good going, Josh. But I like even what it did to the, the little bit of fence. It just adds an imperfection there somewhere. Okay, let's get a whole bunch of our, our low odor mineral spirits, or odorless, in our case, mineral spirits. 
right into that brown and black pile that we made, and then we'll come down and just make a couple, a couple little branches and stuff hanging off this guy. Just small ones. Don't have to go crazy. All sorts of little things we can do with this guy over here. And then you can put it, you can end up putting branches on him if you want. I tend not to. I like them nice and bare, but you could. Remember, if you're gonna have a big branch down around the middle or the bottom, it has to be thick enough to hold itself to the tree, right? You can't have this giant bit of branch with nothing, you know, or a big thick bit at the end when you have this real thin bit down around the bottom, that's not gonna work. Right? I love getting bigger as we go down. All the, all the branches can grow, change. Maybe you got a section that goes over that way. All sorts of things happening, right? Big branches, little branches, we can even make him bigger. Like a big old bit of trunk coming out of there. All sorts of things you can do. Right? And I always think the bigger trunk they have, the more branches they can hold. So, just make it look all crazy, right? All crazy! All right, here we go. Let's do one more. A little bit of paint thinner. And let's come out, let's say, just over our fence like this. Bam, just a little thing like it's kept growing up over the fence. Make it nice and dark, fill it in, nice sharp tip to the end of it. Looks neat. And maybe this guy over here comes out into this bush. See, so pushing that bush further back. So now you can tell the tree is in front, right? Otherwise, this branch wouldn't be in front of it. Damn, looks really neat. I really like it. Hope you guys are liking this one. If you are liking it, make sure to hit that like button down around the bottom. It just helps me reach more people. When you hit that like button, it sends it out to someone else, and they'll hit the like button to send it out to someone else. Damn, let's put that whole big, whole other big bush down in here. Right down here at the bottom. Nice, big, textured, thick, chunky bit of bush, right? Bam. Wash all that off this big old thick brush. Put this big old guy to bed. And when I get all that liquid white, I can grab up. A little bit more of our greens, our yellows. All sorts of stuff. Come back in, just tap him onto this guy. Right? Just a little bit, doesn't have to be super bright. You do not have to be super bright, guys. But if you want them a little brighter, you get a little bit more liquid white, maybe a little bit more yellow even. A little bit more liquid white. Very nice, wet, thick paint. It's also very bright. Then you can come over and poof, just like that, not covering all the bottom, right? We don't need to cover the bottom. Don't want to cover the bottom. The bottom wants to be dark. You can even take our phthalo green, throw that in down around the bottom. Keep it dark, right? Nice and dark. Now we can come back in, scrape in a couple little sticks and twigs of all of our trees and branches that are growing up out of this thing down around here in the bottom. You can even pull it out at the bottom if you didn't like a little bit of it. There we go. Just a little bit kind of shows that we're Growing out onto my easel, right? Which is the best place to grow? That's why it's there. Tomorrow I'm going to be painting. Because today's actually Saturday. Even though you're watching this Wednesday, it's actually Saturday. It's actually Saturday for me in real time. So, let's see. I do want to get like a little bit more dark. Just to get this guy to come out a little bit further. Maybe we got to push him back over the fence, see? That's what it is. You have to add that little layer of mystery. What's happening back over there? What's behind? What's the fence look like way off in the distance where we can't even really see it? it looks great. That's what it looks like. Let me, let me tell you what. I love this. We could even continue the fence over and put another beam right here. And do that. Kind of finish off the painting that way. Kind of finishing her off that way. Just putting a little bit of dark down around the bottom. 
course, whoop, almost fell. My heck. Gotta be along the sides, bam, bam, bam. Looks really good, guys. It looks really good. I really like how this one came out. I almost just want to leave the fence like it is, then maybe we can run around and, and go up to it like that. It's very cool. Very cool. Very cool, very cool. You know what it's missing is a couple of these little swips to the side. I love these little guys. They're the things that like poke out at you when you're going on a walk and they're just sticking off the side of the branch and they nah, and poke you. That's those guys. They're my least favorite guys. Nice and sharp point to that one. Just looked a little strange. Looked a little weird, so we had to fill it in with a smaller brush, right? There we go. Looks cool. I love this sky. Ah, love this sky. It's fantastic. All right, guys. Well, I had a fun time hanging out with you in your living room. I hope you had a fun time hanging out with me, and I hope yours turns out anything like this. It looks great. So... Uh, check out all my pages, all of my shops. You know, we got the etsy.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. There's, you know, if you want to get your supplies, go to amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Uh, you can check out my website, paintwithjosh.com. Always fun things happening over on paintwithjosh.com. Uh, and then go to my YouTube if you're watching this somewhere else. Uh, you can go subscribe to my YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash paintwithjosh. How about that? Let's see. Damn, I love putting little sticks and little twigs and all sorts of stuff just growing every which way. It's fantastic. Just do it quickly, right? That's how you do it. I'm like, Josh, how do you make it look like that? Just do it fast. Just like get all your inhibition and just do it quick and let it, let it lie, right? So, well, I hope you guys like this one. Uh, I hope yours turns out somewhat similar to it. And I really hope you send it in to me because I'd love to see what yours looks like. So, uh, what is that? What is going on over there, Josh? What is that? Is that my door? That can't be my door. Not my door, right? Let me show you. There we go. Some of the danger when you have a uh, you know a bit of your knife where it gets overloaded, it gets overloaded with um, color on one side and then maybe not on the other side, and so you have this bit that you know it's not even. So make sure when you pull out your paint real flat and you cut across, you get this nice even bit to your your knife. There we go. Not too hard to fix. That's what I love about that filbert brush. It's like a little eraser. It's fantastic. Love it. Love it. Let's see what we can do to brighten up this little area in here. Mine was a little dark. There we go. A little dark. Again, just I like just swiping over it just the slightest bit. So you have a little bit of texture, a little knot. You know, a little soft, a little smooth. Looks fantastic. Take a bit of that dirt. And scrape more of it in. You give it as textured as you want to get it, right? Bam. Too far over there, though. Don't want to come out into there. Ooh, look at that. A little bit of yellowy grass up in the front. See? Just cool little things. What's really cool, okay, that I want to show you. Take your liquid white and your fan brush into your yellow. Right? Keep it very bright and maybe just touch as you start coming up your tree. And it's like a little bit of moss starting to grow up your tree right there. You got this cool little difference, right? Little difference in color, different than what everyone else is doing, right? Gotta stand out from everyone else, Josh. So besides that, I hope you guys like this. Uh, I can't think of anything else to show you right now. I hope you really try out a building like that. It's real fun. You get this kind of creaky looking old thing, almost like it's about to fall apart, right? So um, besides that, well, uh, yeah. 
check out all my channels, all my pages. Come see us live on Sunday. And, uh, you know, every Wednesday we'll be giving you a free video. So I'll, I'll also, during the uh, month of October and November, I will be at the Apothecarium, right? Which is on Sahara and Buffalo for anybody who's in Las Vegas. Go down there. And uh, I've got all of my artwork all over the wall. This one's definitely going to go down there. And uh, hopefully it'll sell. So got them down there for like cash prices, man, like cheap. So if you want some nice artwork for and not have to spend a lot of money, head on down to the Apothecarium and purchase one of mine, right? So besides that, you guys... Have the rest of a good day, and uh, I'm going to go get cleaned up and list this sucker for sale. You know what we're missing? Oh, my goodness. You guys are, like, yelling at your TV screens. Josh, Josh, what about the birds? Josh, what about your family of birds? You're missing the birds. Well, we almost forgot, didn't we? Didn't we? There we go. Me, my wife, my daughter. They go into every single painting that we do. So we get to travel, right? We've never been to a place like this before. So let's put our uh, our signature down here. Bam, bam. Just like so, guys. So again, I really hope you try this one. I hope you guys uh, you know, are able to do it. I was able to convey it well enough for you to understand, right? So besides that, Again, check out my websites and my stores and all this stuff. It'll be all in the description below, so you'll see it. But uh, until then, you guys have the rest of a good day. I need to fix one more thing. Every time I look over at this sucker, it's like, Josh, what about all these bits down here? That's very bright now, too. So we just keep dabbing over it until it kind of dulls itself down, right? Perfect. Bam. Now it looks great. So go to my YouTube channel, it's free to subscribe. You can uh, pay for more content if you want, but you don't have to. It's always, it'll always be there for free. And uh, until I see you next time, I hope you guys have the rest of a good day and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.